Well, the Olympic flame has almost completed the first day of its 70-day relay around the UK. Tens of thousands of spectators turned out to catch a glimpse of the flame as it journeyed from Land's End through Cornwall to Plymouth. Well, let's go live now to Jane Hill, who's at Plymouth. Ho, Jane. And Rachel, the mood is really quite fantastic here. There were lots of shouts and cheers just in the last few minutes. The big screens have come on. The finale film has been shown. I think we are down to the last two torch bearers now. The flame, the torch has been making its way through Plymouth City Centre and it is going to be here on Plymouth Hoe, we think, just in the next few minutes. Let me tell you a couple of fantastic figures that Devon and Cornwall Police have just given us because turns out our estimate of 20,000 was way under. They believe, the police force believes, that here in Plymouth, the various areas, the Ho down in the city centre, 40,000 people have turned out today to see the torch. And they say that overall today, everything we've witnessed all day, starting in Land's End so very early this morning, all through Cornwall, and now here in Plymouth tonight, the police are estimating that 100,000 people have been out on the streets at some point today to see the Olympic torch. And in the next few minutes, it will make its way up through here. I don't know the precise route because everywhere I look is just a sea of people. I'm not quite sure how, it's going to, how they're going to maneuver it through, but rest assured they will. It's been a fantastic logistical operation today. A couple of hitches, but broadly very successful. Uh, and it will be making its way up. And a young torchbearer called Madeline Wood will be the lady who uh, has the honor of taking it onto the stage behind me and then to the cauldron. And that cauldron will be lit. And that will mark the end of the first day of this Olympic torch relay in the run-up to London 2012. What remarkable scenes we have witnessed today from Ben Ainsley, the triple gold champion, starting us off so early this morning in Land's End. Despite the very early hour, three and a half thousand people were there to see him. Beautiful sunshine. The weather has been so kind to us today in Cornwall. Chilly now tonight on the water in Plymouth, but overall it has been the most magnificent day. And I think you're just seeing those pictures. You can just see the motorbikes, the cortege making its way through. Of course, it travels in something of a convoy for the next 70 days. It's got protection staff, those TST officers who are the branch of the Metropolitan Police who have been specially trained. 70 torch security officers in total, not with it all the time, but there's always a group of them traveling with it. And these fantastic scenes looking down on Plymouth Ho. And even in the last 10 minutes or so, we have had a sudden surge of people coming in to the, uh, the harbour side here because there's been a, a huge number of people watching its progression through the heart of the city centre. Big BBC screens down there as well showing the concert here. And now they are finally making their way through to the city of Plymouth, down to the water for those final moments. And what a moment for the organising committee to reflect on the passage of the first day. <laughs> a maximum Mexican wave to welcome it in, certainly from a large part of the crowd. There are quite a few phrases today we have heard over and over again. We just heard one of them there. It's coming, it's coming. That's the phrase we keep hearing. And we keep hearing the word pride and proud. So many people in Cornwall earlier today reflected just how excited they were that it was starting in Cornwall and now it's here ending the day in Plymouth. And watching all of the days, not just the day's events, but the huge build-up in advance is my colleague Duncan Warren from BBC Radio Cornwall. And, well, I said the word pride, Duncan. How many people have used that word to me today? Indeed. What pride. a remarkable day. Indeed, uh, indeed, Jane. Pride and passion. Uh, the word amazing we've heard so much mentioned this evening. That's a, another word that we've heard all day long. And I think the phrase has been, well, it'll be the only time in our lifetime. And I think that's possibly what's actually generated so much interest over the last 24 hours or so. Yes. And, and, and every step of the way. I mean, we've had a few glitches, of course. I guess that's to be expected. Maybe we'll talk about those a little later over the course of the evening. Uh, but broadly, 
a remarkable turnout by the people of Cornwall. Three and a half thousand in Land's End very early in the morning. Right. I was in Falmouth, there were 5,000 there. That's a lot of people to squash <laughs> into indeed. those beautiful little streets. You've been, uh, give me some I, of your experiences. Indeed, today. I've been You've in Truro today. Truro was, was gridlocked, not with cars, but with people. It was just absolutely a mass of people in Truro. And when you consider the population of Cornwall is 390,000. And we've got, what, 60,000 plus from Cornwall who've turned out today. I mean, that's a wonderful percentage. I mean, politicians would love that at a general election, wouldn't they? <laughs> wouldn't they just? Wouldn't they? And, well, Cornwall's tourism must be, must be just laughing today because I know we talk about the weather a lot, we're British, but, but Cornwall did shine today, didn't it? it and it well. was like, when I was standing on that quayside in Falmouth, it was like an advert, I felt, for the, the Cornish Tourist Board. Indeed, it's been a wonderful commercial, I think, as you say. And of course, it's been the, the perfect recipe, the backdrop this morning, as you mentioned, at Land's End with Ben Ainsley, the backdrop to finish off this evening here at Plymouth Sound. Add to that the weather, it's just everything's been the perfect, re perfect recipe for success. And the organisers, well, they must be absolutely over the moon. And we know, of course, that one of the key elements of this torch relay, the next 10 weeks, is about saying to people, the Olympics are for you. Wherever you live in the UK, this is to remind you of the Olympic spirit, to excite you about what we're going to see in July and August, but to say that the Olympics are for everyone. Now, people in Cornwall, in Devon, uh, and in the places it'll go in the future, they might feel, you know what, the Olympics is a very long way away from me. I can't afford to get there. It's too expensive. It's too difficult. To what extent do you think this, this relay this weekend has, has, has laid some of that to rest? Do you think it does make people feel it's for them? I, I think you're absolutely right there. I think if anyone had actually doubted the validity of, of having a, a torch relay before the Games themselves, this would have knocked any doubt on the head whatsoever. I mean, this is just day one. So goodness knows what's going to happen over the next 69 days. But I think you're right. People think, well, yes, we can play a part of this. And especially, I suppose, on day one. It's the first day of the relay. You're starting from Land's End, which is one of the iconic points of the British Isles. So everything just has worked in its favour, really. And, uh, well, this is testament, I think, to that, the thousands and thousands of people that are here on Plymouth Sound this evening. Again, the call just went up. The torch is here. There was a huge scream from the crowd. The flashing of so many camera lights, phones going off. The entire crowd, I think, tried to take a picture of this moment. separated by a bridge, of course, and the original idea was to put the, the, the flame into a vehicle and actually drive it across the bridge, and basically it was not going. People said, no, this cannot happen, and fortunately the organisers changed their minds, and it was run across the bridge. And let's just see the big moments, the countdown to the lighting of the cauldron. 